the idea of hearing and listening. Or maybe it's listening and hearing. Differentiate between the physical act of what goes in our ears and the mechanical act of what rolls around in our brain and comes out to be a thought or some sort of influence. How many times have you thought and said perhaps that it appears that if you say something to someone it just goes right in one ear and right straight out the other? But it never stops, by the way, to develop anything at all. That it, it, just, it just doesn't seem to take hold. And the idea is more than just the mechanical part of hearing it. It's listening and hearing. What is the person saying? What is the song revealing? And, and looking, when we look at something, what do we see? How does that influence us? How do we make some image out of that? Two verses of scripture, perhaps three, got our thinking on this matter. And as Shirley pointed out, the first one that is from the book of Ezekiel, the 13th chapter of that book. Make that the 12th chapter. The first two verses of that chapter. These were the words that Jesus was probably referring to when he spoke the second verse, the second part of this, which is Matthew 13, verse 9. Last week we talked extensively about that parable, about the parable of the sower. We talked about this, and at the end of it, we hear these words. But first, from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house. Who have eyes to see, but have not? Who have ears to hear, but hear not? Who have eyes to see, but see not? Perfect, perfect children's moment, Joe. Perfect who have ears to hear, but hear not. For those of us who are, well, a lot of us are visually challenged, we wear glasses. For those of us who are hearing challenged, who have hearing aids, we know what it is when you can't hear. We know what it is not to be able to, to know what other people are saying. And after a while, you get tired of saying, what? What did you say? I didn't understand that. And then what happens is it starts dropping off. You just don't, you just kind of blow it off and you answer a question that they didn't ask or you respond incorrectly to something. And finally they say, eh, you got your hearing aids, Phil? And I say, no, I don't. I left them at home. Well, they don't do you any good at home. So we know what it is to hear words. We know what it is to see people form words with their mouths. But what do we hear? The same thing happens with our eyes. What we see, the image. Second verse here is again from the gospel according to Matthew. This was a part of last week's scripture. But the more I thought about this this week, I thought, well, we talked about this last week. But let's focus on this last verse of this 13th chapter. Jesus has talked about the sowing of seeds. Whether you were here or not, you remember it. You remember I sowed these three bean seeds right here on the pulpit? How many of them do you think have come up? None. Next week I'm going to find a sponge and wet it, lay those bean seeds on it, and they'll probably germinate just as a continued reminder of this parable. Jesus tells the parable to his friends, to his listeners, to his disciples, and he finally concludes, I don't know if they weren't paying attention or what the reason was, and he finally concludes with this ninth verse, he who has ears, 
let him hear. He who has ears, let him hear. Let him hear and listen to what it is that I'm saying. Like any speaker, God's blessing on his word. Like any speaker, the speaker wants to think that he is or she is saying something that is meaningful to those who are hearing what's being said. Across my years, I have spoken, I have countless times, not just to churches, but to other groups, just like many people have. And you always wonder, are the people out there listening to anything you're saying? You've heard the, the phrase, no one home, you know, you're talking to someone and you just look at them and you can tell they're thinking about, pass the biscuits, Brother O'Daniel or whatever, I mean, then what am I having for lunch? Where am I going from here? What have I got to do when I get home? And you want to say, you paying attention? Did you hear what I said? That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus said, I've given you this beautiful parable. I've talked about seeds on rocks. I've talked about seeds in thorns. I've talked about seeds getting eaten by buzzards. And I've talked about seeds in fertile ground. Now, did you hear what I had to say and how that applies to the hearing of the word? Were you paying attention? For all of us, when we have occasion to speak, you can tell whether or not people are paying any attention, and you can't expect 100% in any, in any crowd at any time. You can see it in their eyes. I've talked to many churches across the years, and, and I can always tell when churches, uh, when I would be visiting a church for some reason, that have humor involved in their service. Maybe the preacher tells a late right, Ray Holderby joke or something, I don't know. And, and people are, and people smile. You're smiling, a lot of you are. Now they laugh. But then you can tell those other churches where when you, when you try to say something funny, it's just dead. It's just absolutely dead. It's because they're not used to hearing. They're not used to hearing humor. They're not used to hearing that sort of engagement. So, We've got to be sure what we want to focus on is how what we say is meaningful enough to be heard by those who are listening. The answer may be blowing in the wind, but it's got to be nailed down. It's got to take some sort of formative measures. Saul was that, that Bob Dylan wrote, and Bob sang, was as we know at the beginning of a very tumultuous time in our world. Seems like we're always at the beginning or in the midst of a tumultuous time. This was when the world was beginning to change. This was beginning, if you know, if you listen to any music, much the, the pop music at that time, every song had do why do why do why do somebody in the background singing do why do why do why. That was just a part of it. All the bands in those days had a trumpet player. Couldn't find a trumpet player now if you went out and tried to borrow one somewhere to play in one of these bands. Things were changing. The world was changing. By the time we got 10 years later, we were in the throes of one of the most unpopular wars we've ever participated in. There was incredible political unrest, not unlike today. There was just all sorts of things that would happen in that decade that Bob Dylan sang about at the beginning of. And we look for the answer blowing in the wind. A lot of times we like to think, what is it that we can do to get people's attention? You know, when you're driving down the road and, and you see a state policeman, I, I, I seem to have a magnetic car that finds these people. When they're, when they're parked over in a grove of sycamore trees or they're hiding behind a car or around a curve, and you see, the, and you see them and you know that there's people all coming and you start flashing your lights, at, the part, at people on coming, you think, I'm going to give them a little warning. Maybe they won't get a ticket. Maybe they won't get stopped. Most importantly, maybe if they're going too fast, they'll slow down. The blinking lights. Right now, we had trouble with these lights a few weeks ago. We've got it figured out. They would blink every so often. That gets your attention, doesn't it? When the lights blink, that gets your attention because it's something different. 
something that you're not used to seeing, something that's in the road. The question is, do we really hear what Jesus is saying, and how do we listen and put those words into action? How do we hear? Beyond, sometimes we know we don't do much amen in this church, but there are those that do, and wave their hands, and, and that's all fine. How do we know that we are hearing without some sort of physical manifestation? I've shared with this, with this with you before. The first time I ever sat next to a man who did an amen. We were having, when I was a kid in high school, we had a community Thanksgiving service with the Methodist church down the street. I tried to do that here one year, and it turned out to be me and my brother Daryl Maines were the only people interested in doing that, and so that plan just kind of died a morning, but Daryl brought us a nice sermon, and we celebrated Thanksgiving. Well, at the Methodist church, they were used to the hallelujah, praise the Lord, clap your hands. I was sitting next to this guy, big guy, sang bass in the choir. Whatever the preacher says, he says, hallelujah, I jumped up out of my chair. I thought, well, not really, but... Anyway, it made the story better. But I thought, what? And I looked up at this guy and I thought, what in the world? I was not used to that. How do we react to Jesus' message without shouting hallelujah, without shouting amen? Can we shout that within our hearts? Or do we just hear the words spoken and this just go on about our business? We just go on and do what we were doing before and we think, well, preacher had a good sermon, but, you know, he talked about that last Sunday. I'm kind of bored. I want to hear something else now. Well, next Sunday's 4th of July. Actually, it's the 4th of July. And so we'll be celebrating our nation's birthday all week long. And we'll culminate it next Sunday with our 4th of July celebration. So we'll have something different there, but yet still, the message is in there. The point of all of this, I'm going to get to it. Then I'm going to sit down, believe it or not. Don't, don't believe it yet. I'm not quite through. The point of this is, it's up to you. It's up to you out there in TV land. It's up to us sitting here. Do we accept the message? Do we take it into our hearts? Or do we just let it roll on off? How do we, how do we show it in our lives? Maybe you're saying, I'm doing all I can do. You know, it, you, you did a good job at that fair anyway. You're doing this, this, this. I'm doing all that I can do. I always think back to, and I've quoted this before many times, the line from, from Peter Pan, when Captain Hook and the boys got the boys all on the pirate ship. You remember the story. And he wants them to become pirates. He wants them to join up. And they do this nice little song. Maybe you can do that one sometime, Bob. The choice is up to you. The choice is up to you. He says, here's the choice, boys. You can become a pirate and join the program, or you can walk the gangplank. The choice is up to you. That's what this is says here. Jesus is saying, let those who have ears hear. Let them hear. But the choice is up to you, or does it fall upon deaf ears? Words are translated into action. Words are just words. They're cheap. You can talk all the time. What action do we take? How do we spread the word? How do we spread the love of God? That's what we talk about a lot. In our personal lives, in the life of our church, the life of our community, we conclude this exactly as we begin it. Verse 9 from chapter 13. He who has ears, she who has ears, let them hear. Now you bow together in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for Jesus' message that were given to us, the many messages that were given to us in language that his hearers can understood, understand, and that we can understand here more than 2,000 years later. We may not be gardeners, but we can understand planting a seed on the pavement or on the edge of the pulpit or in good fertile ground. We can understand that. Jesus said this is like the word. Where does it fall? 
Does it fall on, quote, deaf, unquote, ears? Do you hear it? Do you listen to it? Does it move your soul? That's what he's asking us. That's what he's asking us, and he leaves to us the choice that's up to us. We ask your blessings, and we pray in his name.